Welcome, I'm Constant Disappointment, part two. I'd like to start by correcting a mistake I made in part one. I said something really stupid. I said MD and Leah Taverley, uh, both of whom I'm fans of. What I should have said, of course, is uh, MD and Leah Taverley, both of whom I am a fan of. Regarding MD, I, I doubt she knows who I am, but in, in one of her anti-vegan vids, she was generalising about vegan men and described them as uh, neckbeard soy boys. And that's quite an accurate description of me, I think. I, ha I have shaved today, but generally I leave it for a week or two because as a man there's no societal pressure on me to remove hair from my body with all the feminist stuff I'm into as well. Could have called me a, a white knight. I think she missed a trick there. This video is going to be mainly reading out and commenting on comments that were left under the original video. Yeah, even if you don't like my videos, which is understandable, my comment sections are often a gold mine. Let's start here. Pork. 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 I still can't pronounce that. I'm gonna call you spindle because that's my favorite word for spider. Spindle says, considering what beef does to the climate, saying that veganism would be bad in that sense because of plastic is just fucking stupid. Smiley face. Old school smiley face as well with a hyphen for the nose. Don't have much to say about that. I'll just leave it. Um, Brian Campo. Uh, Brian says, sometimes I think carnival diets are popular because of vanity. They do help people slim down quickly and stay slim and that's particularly appealing to women given the social pressure to look a certain way. I, I'm not convinced it helps them to slim down, it depends what else they're eating I guess and depends what kind of animals they're eating. Uh, cut the fat off or whatever, I don't know. But uh, he, Brian is more clever than me so he probably knows what he's talking about. Meat based diets are not actually healthy they're more toxic and carcinogenic. I don't know how valid that is either. I'm sure, you, like I said in the last one, you, you can have a healthy diet eating meat. Maybe not if that's your, your main source of food. I don't know about carcinogenic either. There's something to do with cooking and burning it, maybe. I'm not an expert. I don't have the knowledge about that. Um, unless one is pre-diabetic or diabetic, he says, meat is superfluous for a healthy diet. If people are really concerned about protein, eggs are the most complete protein you can find, and if sourced from chickens given open pasture, it's ethically less problematic than any other animal protein. Yeah, um, ethically less problematic, maybe, but you need to breed these chickens to get the eggs, and you need to do that on a large scale, and there's lots of ethical problems that could pop up in that scenario. SF says, I'm a little resentful of Earth's kill-to-live policy. Sure, she slash he doesn't mean that literally because obviously a planet is a lump of rock and metal and stuff and, and doesn't have any sort of policy. But, uh, says, I've mostly been vegetarian and I've never ventured beyond fish and poultry, but ethically I prefer veganism. That's fair enough. Yeah, I don't know how other types of animals would be more ethical to kill than fish and poultry. I would appreciate it if you disagree with anything I'm saying or you think uh, you have reason to believe anything I'm saying is not true, please leave a comment. It's healthy for anyone, I think, to consider people who disagree with them sometimes fundamentally. That's how you learn things and develop your ideas to be more accurate like as a representation of physical reality you know what I mean I can't even kill bugs I end up talking to them a lot yeah I've got some slugs that come out at nine o'clock or ten o'clock at night in my bathroom they're my friends I like them I'd be okay with lab grown meat if it was available and bearable yeah me too I think uh, the, the lab grown meat they have made is reportedly quite bland because it's pure protein. I think if you're going to try to convince people that it is meat, you need to synthesize blood and subcutaneous fat as well. Meat is more than just the protein. ES, I am glad you are back. I enjoy your videos. Thank you very much. I have bad taste in things too, so I know where you're coming from.
appreciate it. Cheers. The main problem with veganism as I see it is that it is a moral claim that ultimately demands the utter destruction or dismantling of every human cuisine culture in existence. You can still eat Indian, Chinese, whatever food, replace the meat with another form of protein and it's still recognisably food from those cultures. I don't know about other countries or whatever but if you look at what people in the UK were generally eating like 200 years ago it's a lot different to what we eat now. A lot of people now would see it as disgusting, <laughs> including me. I don't think it's like a type of food that stays the same forever and I don't think we're losing anything by changing our tastes it just naturally happens over time veganism a hegemonic ideology I might disagree with that too obviously there are a lot of vegans who are very passionate and uh, about it a lot of them slash us do promote it and see people who don't follow it as bad people. I don't see that at all, but in a lot of cultures, especially in the past and still today in some places, because of patriarchy, as an example, it's seen as normal for a man to marry and have sex with a 12-year-old girl. And you could say to them, you shouldn't have sex with a 12-year-old girl, and they might be like, no, leave us alone, it's part of our culture, we want to have sex with 12-year-old girls, let us do it, we've been doing it for a long time. So if you see breeding and killing and eating animals as ethically wrong, I think it's understandable that you might want to spread that idea to other people. Yeah, a lot of us are <laughs> very annoying and judgmental, but maybe you can understand why? But I don't think it's necessarily hegemonic. Veganism should stand in contradistinction with just being plant-based because one wants to reduce suffering of sentient animals. That's why I'm doing it. I don't feel good about contributing to suffering and death when it's not necessary for me to do so. That is respectable, but once it is transformed into an ideological movement making a moral claim that requires adherence to support infringing or curbing the rights of non-believers, read omnivores, it moves into toxic territory and I can no longer support it. Yeah, I see your point and I partially agree with you. Beatrix Kid Video says, We're not breeding bulls and boars and steers and roosters to eat. Those aren't the animals headed to slaughter by the billion each day, kept in captivity and their babies stolen from them in horrific scenes of inhumanity and abuse. Any radical feminist worth her salt should see this exploitation of the female in all species for what it is domination. Men love meat, men love killing, men value life less because they do not create it. The world is in a capitalist stupor and some radical feminists have joined the fray waving a flag of idiocy. I'm not going to say it's idiotic but there does seem to be a, a section of feminists who do see veganism as morally questionable. There's a channel called Lesbian Strength that's got a good number of talks by lesbian feminists. I'll link it in the description, it's definitely worth a watch. But there was someone on there playing the ukulele and a small part of one of her songs. She was talking about cutting down the rainforest to grow soya beans and suggesting that's because of vegans and I would agree if that was the case chopping down any number of trees in the rainforest I'm dead against for whatever reason but most of those soya beans if I'm correct there's more animals bred for slaughter than there are vegans most of those beans go towards animal feed and then the animals get killed and eaten. The arguments I've heard against veganism don't seem like very strong arguments to me. They're not very convincing, I don't find. Maybe I've just not heard the good ones, but you'd expect people making arguments in favour or opposed to something to give their best arguments first. So if you're anti-vegan, I'd love to hear from you. Give me your reasons why in the comments. That would be brilliant. As regards the females being sexually exploited, etc., which they are, it's not the whole picture because males can obviously impregnate millions of females, so it doesn't make financial sense to raise males for food. Uh, they don't produce milk or eggs or anything like that either. Most males are killed fairly soon after birth. 
for an example, see the thumbnail to this video. The male babies are killed, the females are reared and bred and then killed. So their children can be bred and killed as well. And the spindle <laughs> says, Radfem Leoti follows that disgusting guy Severage. He's been fined for eating a raw dead squirrel on a vegan food market. Uh, yeah, Leo again. Yeah, again, I, I come to these channels because of stuff I already agree with. But in a lot of cases, I stay for the things I don't agree with. But the last anti-vegan video I saw her making, her argument was vitamin B12 deficiency. Which... Nah. <laughs> in processed vegan food, they tend to add vitamin B12 anyway. A meat-eating diet is not a panacea for vitamin B12 deficiency. Even people who eat animals are recommended to supplement vitamin D. Because nature doesn't care if we live past our breeding age, which traditionally isn't very old. As long as we produce offspring, it doesn't care if we get ill and or die relatively young after that. But we would like to live longer, so it's healthy for us to supplement these things that nature didn't really care about us getting enough of because it didn't kill us too soon. And where do you think these plant-eating animals got their vitamin B12 from in the first place? It comes from bacteria in the soil. That's pretty much the only place it originates naturally. So either buy your veg from somewhere that doesn't wash it all off. Most places do wash it all off because people don't like buying dirty looking food. Either that or supplement. The animals probably don't get enough of vitamin B12 from the soil either so they get injected with supplements themselves so you may as well cut out the middleman and just do it yourself and that's Severage I don't know much about him I spent a few seconds looking at his channel that was long enough for me to realize that it's not my sort of thing at all I don't get this she says she follows a guy who's abused his girlfriend and does activism by eating raw liver and stuff around vegans. If he does that, I don't see what he's trying to achieve other than attention. I, I, can't, <laughs> I can't see anything good happening because of him doing that. Spindle says she doesn't get her at all and stopped following long time ago. Gross. Yeah, like I say, I, I don't agree with her on some things. Uh, well, probably lot of things uh, but that doesn't stop me watching her I do like her I make no apologies for that she's an angry young woman who does her best not to be told what to do by men or patriarchy in general and I think the world would be a better place if there were more people like that not everyone's cup of tea obviously not most people's cup of tea I don't think but being so controversial she does get these ideas uh, but she does manage to promote them quite well, maybe not in a way that will get people who disagree with her to consider them, but yeah, I like her, she's cool. Beatrix says, obviously food systems are capitalist in nature and have taken the power of survival out of the hands of the people, but that's capitalism which is absolutely patriarchal. Mm -hmm. Most radical feminism used to be a fight for the oppressed, and who is more oppressed than a formerly wild and free animal population now caged from birth to death for torture, slaughter and consumption by a more powerful human population? To believe humans have an inalienable right to do this to other species is to be as sociopathic and arrogant as any man. The world in which agriculture and hands-on contact with the creatures you kill and eat has been abolished in Western society. Yeah, that's a fair point. I mean, if you are going to eat animals, I think it would be good for you to spend some time in a slaughterhouse or at least watch footage of them, see what goes on there to decide if that's something you want to be a part of. I mean, if it is, fair enough, all power to you. But a lot of people disassociate this bit of food on their plate from the processes required for it to get there. So yeah, again, if you uh, disagree with anything I'm saying, if you think anything I'm saying is untrue, please comment. Love to hear from you and I can address your thoughts in the next one of these videos, which hopefully won't take as long for me to get out. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for watching. Peace.